British Museum, we are looking at the icon of the triumph of orthodoxy, which was made in about kind of 1450 in Istanbul, not Constantinople, although it was Constantinople then. At the time, <laughs> yeah. Because we're still in the time of the Byzantine Empire when this was made. And I think what always grabs me the first about looking at icons is the contrast of the colors against the gold background. Yes. And it makes the colors kind of seem that much more vibrant, but also it draws your attention to the gold background itself. Yeah, and the gold, of course, is, is the spiritual. It's the heaven. It's what you're not supposed to represent. Because when you're looking at Byzantine art, we must remember that what happened was at the period otherwise known as iconoclasm, where there was a war fought over images, and image producing became completely illegal. And people went around destroying icons, images, church imagery. There was a good 150 years where people couldn't make art, and they fought wars for it, and they destroyed art because they felt that you shouldn't be representing Christ in any way because of thou shalt not worship false idols in the Bible. So not that different from the Islamic idea of not representing the same figural, idea, figural the same scenes. Book, the same words, yeah. exactly. And what we have in this icon is very interesting because it doesn't function simply like a, the traditional kind of icon where you look at it and you're worshipping through it, you're meditating on it and having it as a channel to the figure represented on the panel. This has also got some commentary about the history of icons itself and the name of this of course is the triumph of orthodoxy and it's split into two registers so on the, if we look at the upper one quite obviously there's an, an icon within an icon in the middle it's being held by two angels surrounded in red material so if they've been destroying images for a good long time there then here is not only an image but they're showing an image within the image so they're kind of emphasizing that it's okay now to, to paint these images again and to the left hand side we've got empress she had theodora and her name is written above her there identifying who she is and on the lower register we have a whole list of figures there you've got sort of priests and monks and there's one single woman on the left hand side as well and she's holding a little tiny image it looks like it's it's christ in there i think because yeah. you can see it's got, got a cross nimbus and that's always you know that's not just a normal halo it's got the cross in the background so that's how you know that's definitely christ so we've got lots of kind of images within images here and this is an icon made in the 1400s with a load of people and an empress from 800. So why are they looking back? What are they doing? Yeah, and it, I mean, it seems like the emphasis really is on that tradition of image making and, and putting Theodora in there makes sense because she's sort of the one who was responsible for bringing back mm -hmm. the she, tradition of image she making. She restored image making. She was the one that brought about the triumph of orthodoxy, the, the fact that we could worship images again. And it's interesting because the image in the icon within the icon there that the angels are holding is one of a type called the Hodegatria. And it means basically she who shows the way. And you see the way she's holding her hand and she's pointing to her son, the Christ child on her nap. And look at her face. She's sorrowful. She's very sad. And she's with her hand. You see, she's pointing to him and her face is jumping ahead to what she knows is going to happen next that he's going to be crucified. And, and it is a very common type of virgin and child that you see in icon paintings specifically. And it's very important because the original version of this, they say, was painted by St. Luke. From life, from Mary. So St. Luke, the evangelist of the four evangelists. Yes. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, yes. this is Luke. And he's a patron saint of painters now because of this. And they said that this particular icon, the original one that they said that St. Luke had painted, was kept in Constantinople. So they did lots and lots of copies of that icon. And each icon you copied would be exactly the same, more or less, but it would take the inherent property of the original one, that power that, that St. Luke had put into it. So the lower register then, if we're looking at the top one, they're celebrating the empress who brought this back um, on the upper register. To the lower register, we have this whole array, as we said before, of monks and saints and the lady on the left-hand side. And they are all people who are martyred in the cause of trying to protect imagery during the iconoclastic years. They've all got these kind of lovely beards, except for, of course, our one lady on the end. But, but look at all their robes as well, the kind of vertical lines of all these robes kind of putting them into rank and really kind of making a, a unit of them. Mm -hmm. Like, look at all of the many people who've been martyred for this important cause. So the question again is then, why in 1400 are they looking back to a scene from 843 that they've kind of composed, because we know actually that maybe not all those martyrs would have been born at that time, some of them were martyred later on. Uh, but why would they do that in 1400? Well, let's think about what was kind of happening with the Byzantine Empire at it, the time. It had reduced. I mean, they used to, they inherited the Roman Empire. It was vast and it reduced now to mm. just basically kind of the, the area we would now call modern-day Turkey. And of course, the Islamic 
people have been coming across and barraging them and their faith doesn't use imagery and they're battering these people and they've run out of wealth they've run out of money at the Byzantine Empire and they're going around and they've even coming to the courts in the west to France traveling great distances asking for support and money to help them fight these armies so and they say is, no so so this is kind of in a way, maybe trying to connect to a previous time in the Byzantine Empire's past where they were stronger and the, and the image saved them. And so with having all the help removed from them and other powers in Europe saying, no, we're not helping you, we're not giving you money, we're not supporting you, they go back to that, well, we better just try the images again. So they make their special image with an image of triumph and power and glory in the hope that that will save them mm. from the onslaught. It doesn't really work. No. Sadly, the Byzantine Empire doesn't really survive. I'm struck by that emphasis on the power of image making and images themselves, because oh. as art historians, that's something we kind of continue to believe to this oh. day. And a power that drove people to kill each other because of the power of the image.